Okay, I'm not into pop music so much. I don't really know anything about it. But I want to state for the record to start this video, I like Ariana Grande. Why? Because I'm a human being and I've heard a few of her songs. Can I name any of those songs? No. But I did see that one video where she's, you know, recreating all of those girl comedies from the early 2000s. And it was great. She's great. So uh, I like her. I want to just throw that out there. Um, also, I want to remind you of a horrible thing that happened. Um, you'd be forgiven for forgetting about it because it's been a couple of years and there have been many other similar horrible uh, scenarios uh, since then. However, if you'll recall, back in 2017, a terrorist bombed one of Ariana Grande's concerts in Manchester, killing dozens of people and injuring hundreds more. It was really horrific. And uh, Ariana Grande, you know, that would screw up anybody. She wasn't hurt, but she did immediately uh, cut her tour short. She flew back to Florida to stay with her mom. And she's been very open about the fact that she got PTSD from that situation, um, which makes total sense. And I'm, I'm really glad that she's been open about having PTSD. Um, that's great. But, and you know, there's always a but. Um, Ariana Grande recently posted on Instagram uh, a scan of her brain and compared it to scans of a healthy brain and a brain with PTSD. Um, and, you know, her brain was all lit up, uh, much like the one with PTSD. And she said that it was hilarious and terrifying. Uh, and then she wrote that she wanted to encourage y'all to make sure you check on your brain slash listen to your bodies slash take care of yourselves. I love science and seeing the physical reality of what's going on in there was incredible to me. Ariana's heart is in the right place, but her brain is not. Sorry, bad joke. Um, what I'm trying to say is that this is not science. Um, I know. I'm sorry. It, it looks like science. It feels like science, but it's not. It is, in fact, pseudoscience. Mental illness can absolutely does cause changes in the brain. And yes, it is possible for doctors, uh, for them to maybe be able to see those changes uh, using various types of imaging. But right now, our knowledge and technology is only at the point where we can maybe see subtle changes across large populations of people. Uh, it's nowhere near the point where a doctor can look at an individual's brain scan and say, yes, these bright spots right here show that this person has PTSD. Unfortunately, that is not stopping certain quacks from saying exactly that repeatedly and making millions of dollars doing so. One such quack is Daniel Amen, uh, who lives in a mansion on the Pacific coast, raking in about $20 million a year, telling people that he can diagnose and cure their mental illnesses using brain scans. He uses a thing called single photon emission computed tomography, or SPECT. Despite the fact that this is actually outdated technology in a way, it has much lower resolution than things like fMRI and other methods of brain imaging. Um, but he claims that he can differentiate between things like PTSD, traumatic brain injury, ADD, and other disorders with a degree of accuracy that is not only completely ridiculous, but has yet to be re replicated by anyone, which is difficult for anyone to even try to replicate because he refuses to make any of his data public. The interesting thing about all of this is that even if his scans don't actually work at diagnosing mental illnesses, Amen does seem to have found uh, significant amounts of success in getting patients to adhere to a treatment plan, which is often a big problem in cases of mental illness. Showing a person a photo of their brain and saying, here is the problem you're experiencing can be extremely powerful as Ariana Grande made clear in her Instagram post. It can convince people that, yes, there is something physically wrong in your brain and it can be fixed. And so these people are more likely to take the recommended drugs and to make the recommended lifestyle changes that could improve their mental health, things like changing their diet and exercising more. When I was nine or 10, I broke my pinky finger playing wiffle ball. 
Yes, I know. I was quite the daredevil. It was summertime and I was supposed to make sure that my bandages did not get wet at all um, because, you know, my finger needed to set properly for about a month or so. I don't really remember. And I did not do that. I was constantly in the water at the beach in the ocean going tubing. Um, I refused to change my lifestyle and I had to go back to the doctor four or five times to have him redo the bandages. My mom was very annoyed. Uh, it was hard for me to change my lifestyle in that instance. Imagine how much harder it would have been if I didn't have an x-ray showing that my finger was broken. Uh, imagine if people around me didn't even believe fingers could be broken or people thought that I was just making up the pain. I very well could have just continued on with a broken finger, assuming that that's what fingers are supposed to feel like. So does that mean that I think that Amen and other quacks are actually doing a good thing? Because ultimately they're validating people and encouraging them to get better? No. Uh, we can do those things without bilking people out of millions of dollars uh, and misleading them about the science of brains and mental illness. Another example from my life, back in college, I went to a doctor complaining about being nauseated all the time. This was during finals. And I told the doctor that I felt constantly like I was on a roller coaster, you know, that feeling in my stomach. And he said that I had heartburn and he gave me heartburn medication, which helped. It helped my nausea um, go away. So I figured that he must have been right. And then I, I continued living my life and eventually stopped taking the medication and I was mostly okay. But then years later, it came back and I had a new doctor and I went to him and I said, hey, can you give me this heartburn medication? And he said, well, I can, but why would I when what your actual problem is that you have severe anxiety that's causing the heartburn? Um, and so he gave me a prescription for an anti-anxiety. Um, and I suddenly, when I started taking that, I realized that all the things I just assumed were a part of life, like lying in bed at night, freaking out because we can never stop the heat death of the universe. Uh, those things were actually being caused by a real disorder in my brain and it was fixable. I suddenly felt validated and seen by that doctor. And that helped me get to the point where I don't literally make myself sick worrying about things that I can't control. And the more I see other people talk about their own mental health issues, the better I feel and the more motivated I become to improve my own lifestyle, to stay on my meds, to adjust my meds when they need to be adjusted, uh, or to go for a run sometimes, or to eat something other than Cadbury cream eggs for dinner. We can encourage better mental health simply by getting rid of the stigma around it, by encouraging people to talk about it, and by telling them the actual science of neurology and psychology. Uh, oh, and by the way, universal healthcare wouldn't hurt either. I know, I end pretty much every video with that, but it's true. <laughs>